Thank you, Perry, for your prayer. Um, it's encouraging that you guys are, I know you guys are all on my side, you guys are all here, so you guys postponed your uh, camping trip, and I'm very thankful that you are here to support me in, in, as I teach. Um, we're going to start, uh, te- I'll start teaching on the book of James. Um, just a little uh, background as to why I picked this. I've really enjoyed this book. I find um, it just has a lot of advice on living as a Christian, and it just, it, as I've read it, it just means a lot to me, and hopefully you'll get the same uh, same value out of it as I do. Um, it's my intention to teach the whole book over, might be a year, might be two years, whatever. Um, I'll start slow, I guess. Um, but, you know, it is my intention ultimately to, to teach the whole book. Um, uh, today, uh, we'll start with just the introduction and uh, James chapter 1, and verses uh, 1 through 18. Uh, a little background on the book. Uh, this was written, the book was written by James, an apostle. Uh, the writer is thought to be the half-brother of uh, Jesus himself. Uh, he's mentioned several places in the Bible. Um, if you need the list, uh, let me know. I can give it to you guys after the service. Um, the apostle Paul mentions that Jesus appeared to James after his resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15 and the, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 7. Um, according to the cent- second century historian Josephus, James was martyred in AD 62. Uh, this letter was most likely written to early Jewish Christians uh, scattered outside of Palestine. Um, I guess the Holy Spirit saw a need to write this letter to them, and that's that's why we have this, this today. Um, it is also thought to be the earliest letter written in the New Testament. Uh, this is important because this means that James was not able to read uh, Matthew's account of Jesus' life, Luke's account of Jesus' life. He, as we, you know, as I said, with um, James being the, the half brother of Jesus, probably meant that he was around for a lot of Jesus' direct teaching. And um, as we'll learn, um, James is fond of giving commands, as there's approximately 180 found in this book alone. Uh, it offers much practical advice today for uh, Christians. Uh, James built heavily upon Jesus' direct teaching, as I said, you know, being his brother, he probably. You know, probably was around around him a lot as Jesus was uh, ministering to the Jews. Uh, there are also some things to look out for. There's some uh, several parallels between this letter and the Sermon on the Mount. As uh, we'll go through, I'll try to point those out to you guys. Um, as we'll learn about later, his approach to faith initially appears to be somewhat different than the Apostle Paul. Um, but when we, we really stop and look at it, um, it's actually quite similar to this. The probably you know, a couple lessons later, but uh, we'll cover that in a later lesson. On to chapter 1. Verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Uh, James here identifies himself as a servant of God and of, uh, of Jesus. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of, of your faith develops perseverance. Um, we can read about 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Uh, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. Um, we will also discuss the uh, testing of our faith later in this, this chapter. Um, verse 4. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Um, some examples of perseverance... In my, as many of you know, I was a runner. I've been a runner for many years. Um, there were many days that I would come home from work and just be tired and not really want to go out there and get, you know, get my mileage in. But you know, a lot of times those days I persevered. I got through it. You know, put the shoes on, get out the door. Um, and you know, it's it's interesting to know that when I got to the race day and I was standing around the starting line, I know that I was I had done everything possible. I was my work was complete. That I was going to run the best race possible. Another example is a baby bird egg. Um, after the baby bird is ready to be hatched, it has to go through this painful struggle to break out of the shell. If it does not break out of the shell, it dies within the egg. Verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who will give generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Um, we can define wisdom here. Um, it's basically, you know, we have knowledge and we have wisdom. Knowledge is knowing how knowing how to do something. You know, we can read a, a textbook on nuclear physics. It doesn't mean we're going to have the knowledge to be able to apply that to our, you know, to running a nuclear generator. Um, 
wisdom is the application of that to uh, of the application of the knowledge. Um, if we ask God and actively pursue wisdom and how to better please Him, He's not going to hold back from us. Um, it's it's another interesting thing to note that we must actively pursue this. You know, Rich tells the story a lot of times with his friends. Uh, son that was looking for a job at Radio Shack, you know, he says, you know, he's not going to get the job because he's not going to get off his butt and go out there and, and try to get it. Um, another a good example is uh, Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3 and in verses 9 through 13. Um, in the story, um, God comes to Solomon in a dream and says, you know, I will grant you with whatever you, uh, whatever you ask for. Um, Solomon is a young king and he asks God for wisdom wisdom to serve like my father David did. Um, and God is all pleased by this. God says, you know, by you asking for wisdom, I'm going to grant you the things that you did not ask for, the, the money, the power, um, the long life. Um, it's, it's interesting to note that God will give generously when we ask for the correct things in our lives. Verse 6. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. We must believe and not doubt that our Heavenly Father can and has done anything, no matter how impossible it may seem. We're talking about a God that raised Jesus from the dead. He can do anything. Um, another good example is Rich. With Rich he was talking to me when I was looking for a job a few months ago. Um, he came up and told me, you know, look, I went into a job where I walked into the interview where the, the employer said, I, I'm going to hire the guy previous to you. you know? And Rich said, well, you're going to hire the wrong man. I'm the correct man for it, you know, I'm going to, I cannot work any of your, your employees. Rich went in believing and not having a doubt that he was the correct man. The man, from what Rich told me, turned around and said, you got it. You have that much confidence that you're the right man. I'm going to hire you. Verse 7. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. Belief is important. If we do not believe that God can do anything, uh, can do something, why should he do it for us in our lives? Um, we can read in Matthew 17, verse 20, uh, Jesus speaking about faith. He says, you know, if you have faith as small as a mushroom seed, you can tell this mountain to move from here to there, and it will be done. Verse 9. The brother in humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position. It's, in, it's interesting you see humble circumstances. We think of humble as somebody in low position. Um, the, the high position here is not as we would think of a high position. This is a high position with, with God. It's, you know, it's, it's a spiritual high position. Um, it's much better for the Lord to exalt us than for a man to exalt us. Um, Jesus speaks in the Beatitudes of the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. We can also read in Luke 14, in chapter, chapter 14, verse 11, and Matthew 23, and verse 12. Uh, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled, whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Verse 10. But the one who is rich should take pride in his low position, because he will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossoms fall, its blossom falls, and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. Um, as the saying goes, uh, you can't take wealth with you after you die. You know, we can accumulate all the wealth we can here, but it doesn't really, it doesn't mean anything once, once we die. It's, you know, we, don't, we, don't, we can be rich here, and you know, we're not going to be necessarily rich in heaven. We afford it. Um, a good example is the summertime grass. You know, February, March, that grass looks great. It's all nice and green. It's, it just looks fantastic. But you know, by about now, mid-July, you, you look at it, and it just looks brown. And it does not look good. It just it's withered. Um, it's the rich have a harder struggle because typically they have more of a love of money, love of possessions. Um, you can see an example of the rich young man in uh, Matthew 19. Uh, the rich young man comes to Jesus and says, "You know, I kept all the commands." What do I still lack? And Jesus tells him, um, you know, yes, you've been you've, you've been faithful in many things, but um, you know, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Uh, the, man, the rich young man ultimately goes away dejected because he has much love for money, um, 
and Jesus states in verse 23, uh, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Um, and just note here that this, he's not saying it's impossible, he's just saying it's harder. Um, there's, you know, there's several rich people that spend their money wisely, they, they give to the poor. Um, he's not, you know, he's not saying that, that they're not going to achieve the kingdom of heaven. Uh, verse 12. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Um, a good example is when I was going to college with my college diploma. Um, you know, there, again, a lot of days, it just you don't really want to go to class. You know, ah, I can skip it. You, know, you have to work really hard, but at the end of the day, when you get that diploma, you know just how much work you put in. It's just very rewarding. Uh, the Greek word for trial here is uh, erosimos, which also can mean temptation. Now, by enduring through temptation, we will receive the crown of life, which is eternal salvation. Uh, another thing about trial is um, uh, basically when we go through trials, uh, sometimes we'll have success, and it's, it's comforting to know when we do have those successes, um, it sets us up for the future. Okay, I know how I handled this in the past, now I can handle it in the future always. Gives you something to look back on in your life. Uh, verse 13. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. As, as it says, God cannot be tempted and also does not impose temptation upon us. He does permit us to undergo these temptations so that we may persevere as a test of faith, uh, allowing us to show God our commitment. Uh, we can read about 1 Corinthians 10, uh, verse 13. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. We have a chance to express and develop our faith by overcoming temptation. Um, it's important to note that these are evil temptations. You know, there's good temptations in the world. You know, not tempted to speak to my, my co-workers about the message of Christ. These are evil temptations. Um, and they're also from Satan. Uh, Satan can also be referred to as the tempter. <laughs> Verse 14. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Um, James here is speaking on the process of uh, temptation we have a process, you know, and I know Rich has a Rich has a Jeep, and you know, maybe I'm thinking, oh, I, I want, I really want that Jeep. Um, that's you know, that's the desire building up, and um, as it builds up, maybe I think I can I can never afford to buy it. I'm just going to go steal it. So you know, it, I get dragged away with that and enticed, and then you know, after it's as that desire is conceived, you know, I go and I grab his keys and I take off on a joyride, and that's that's the sin and. Um, it ultimately, it, it'll give birth to death. This is this is not a physical death. Uh, this is a spiritual death. Um, another good example is drug addicts. You know, they they start out doing a little bit, and ultimately, they, their life just spirals out of control, and they it just it destroys them. Um, when we are tempted, the evil itself is not difficult. It's our response to the evil that defines us. You know, I may struggle with something that Fred doesn't struggle with. Fred might struggle with something that I don't struggle with. You know, we may face the same situation. Fred might come through it, no problem. I might end up you know, falling, falling down. But you know, so it's the, when we're presented with a situation that it's not necessarily hard, but you know, as we as we react to it is where we get into trouble. Verse fifteen. Uh, we can also read about Luke twelve, uh, verse four, and Matthew ten. Uh, do not be afraid of the one that can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both the soul and the body and hell. Uh, verses 16 and 17. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. All good things come from God. I'm going to say that again. All good things come from God. Um, 
Um, we can read in Matthew 7, 9, and 11, this is later on in the Sermon on the Mount, um, Jesus is speaking about gifts for fathers and sons. He says, um, fathers, who among you when your son asks for a asks for fish would give him a snake? Who among you when your son asks for bread would give him a stone? Um, and he states, you know, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? stated earlier, God, God will give generously when we ask for the right things in our lives. It's also important to note that God does not change. He's the same God today as he will be a thousand years in the future. He's the same God today as he was for Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Paul. He's, he's the same God. He's never changed. Verse 18. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Um, he's speaking on the word of truth. This is, this is Jesus. Uh, it's thought to be Jesus here. Um, Jesus' words. Uh, it's also, also going to mean uh, give us birth through baptism. Um, uh, it's, it's interesting to note that God chooses to give us these gifts. Uh, he, he does not have to give us anything. There's nothing we can do to earn these gifts. Uh, he chooses actively. Um, it is only because he is a loving God that we receive Speaking on first fruits, uh, in the Old Testament, the Israelites were instructed to give God the first part of their harvest. Um, that's basically what we become. We become the first fruits. We are the first ones you know, of, the, of the crop. We are the ones set aside for God. Uh, we belong to God as the first fruits. Okay, that's all. Awesome. Um, turn it over. If any of the mail members have questions or thoughts? Thank you.